Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here, and today I'm going to be taking you through a job site tutorial uh, where we're going to take this raw wood uh, bench behind me uh, from its current state, which is unfinished raw wood. Uh, then we're going to prime it and then do our top coat. So it'll go from raw wood to completely finished um, and ready to go. Uh, we actually have three raw wood sections in this kitchen we're working on. Uh, there's two window sills and then this bench behind me. So uh, that is the process we're going to be going through today uh, in this video. And with raw wood, you want to make sure you're using the correct products and layering them correctly so that you get the finish that you're going for. A lot of times too with sills, uh, they get a lot of wear and tear and people put things on them. So uh, it's a good idea to make sure you're using a, a decent trim paint that's going to hold up well over time. Um, so that's what's up. And the bench that is behind me here, the homeowners wanted it to match the cabinetry that's below. So what I did is I removed one of these cabinet doors, took it over to Sharon Williams, had them laser match it. Uh, that's a really good way to do it. I know they have some handheld things that you can um, do it yourself, but you're not gonna get quite as good of a match if you can take something to uh, the Sharon Williams store or any paint store and have them use their kind of bigger laser to match it. Uh, the products that we're going to be using today, I get to use my favorite primer of all time, which is uh, Sharon Williams Premium Wall and Wood Primer. This stuff is the Cat's Jammers. It's super nice. Um, and uh, I'm going to be doing a review on this here in a second. And what's cool is I'm going to use it to prime not only these sills, but uh, the rest of the walls and stuff too, because I have the can open and uh, roller set up and everything. So. We'll show you how to do that. And then our finished paint is going to be emerald urethane trim enamel from Sharon Williams. And this is what I got color matched to the cabinetry. Uh, so that is what we're gonna be doing. Uh, this is gonna be a three stage process, one coat of primer, two top coats of trim paint, and that should do us. Um, the carpenters have already wood puttied and caulked in the uh, sill here, or the, the bench. One moment. The carpenters have already wood puttied uh, the holes in here and they've also caulked it into the walls, which is fine. Um, so I don't have to do that part. We'll just be running our primer and then our top coats. So that's what's going on today. Let's get to it. All right, so I know I said it was a three-step process, but you do want to do a little bit of prep work. Um, some of this has already been done for me. Uh, Cause like I said before, the carpenters have already wood puttied the holes and they caulked it into the walls. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you caulk before or after you prime, same goes for wood puttying, uh, but this is already done, so that's where I'm at in the process right now. But what I do want to do is sand uh, the whole surface of this bench uh, with some sandpaper. I like 150 grit. Uh, this is 3M, it's what I use all the time. Um, what that does is it's going to kind of get any of the grit or little shimmy pecks out of the wood and make sure we're starting with a smooth surface. Most of the time with painting, uh, at the end of the process, we want a really nice uniform finish. And what I mean by uniform is that it looks the same uh, through the whole, uh, either like the surface of the wall, or in this case, a bench top. So um, by sanding it, I'm just getting a lot of the schmutz and the shamely pecks out of uh, the wood. It just helps everything starting out at the same level, uh, which is good. So I'm just gonna quick sand this and then vacuum it and then I'll be ready to start priming. Also, I did not realize how much people do not like the sound of sanding. So instead of the sound of sanding, which I will be hearing that right now, uh, we'll play some, we'll say, we'll play some whimsical music as you guys watch me sand this. important to sand with the grain. So this grain is going this way, so that's why I'm sanding in this direction, not forward and back. That would be against the grain, which is not what we want. see me do a couple things uh, as I'm painting this. 
Um, if you're a little bit less experienced cutting in and using a brush, one of the things you want to consider is maybe taking these doors off. I'm just going to open them because uh, I'm pretty comfortable with my, my brush work. So um, that's just to get the underside of this lip here. Um, and then the other thing is just like with sanding, when you're laying the brush strokes down, you want to go with the grain. So you're going to see me go back and forth this way. Uh, that's going to give us our, our really nice finish here. Um, and I already vacuumed off the sill. It's not a bad idea to just wipe it down with a rag real quick. Uh, and then um, pretty much right now, we're just going to lay down the primer, let that dry, uh, and then do our top coats. Alrighty, so we've got everything primed in the room, uh, including uh, this bench top behind me, which I'm about to hit with trim paint. Uh, before we do that, I am going to sand it. Super good idea to sand after the primer is dried. A lot of times when you apply a primer to bare wood, uh, the grain can rise and you just get some, uh, a couple different things that are gonna just be a little rough. So we wanna sand that out to start with the smoothest surface possible. That really contributes to a nice smooth finish uh, when we're done, which is what everybody's goal should be if you're doing a project like this. And I will be going in a very specific pattern when I start uh, to actually apply the top coat. Uh, one of the comments that I see a lot uh, from you fine folks at home is uh, concern about using the right product in the correct application. And this is one of those where it is a high traffic uh, kind of situation where things are going to get put on it and people may sit on it, things like that. So durability is a, is a factor and there's definitely uh, better products uh, than others to, for this uh, particular setup, uh, which is why I'm going to go with Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel from Sherwin-Williams. And that's what we're going to use just on the trim in the entirety of this uh, kitchen, uh, but also for this bench top. And um, I'm just going to be brushing it on, but that paint, it's, uh, it's super nice. It dries really hard. It's going to be a little bit more durable uh, than maybe like a latex trim paint, something a little softer like Duration Semi-Gloss or something like that, which might be perfectly fine for another application. But for this, uh, we just want something that's a little bit more, got a little bit more uh, hardness to it, a little bit more durability. First, I'm just going to sand, vacuum, and then wipe this off. And then I will show you the pattern I go with when I lay down the top coat. So now this thing's ready to rip and I'm going to lay down my first uh, top coat of trim paint. Uh, I should also mention that it is Friday afternoon around 2.30. Um, I would really like to get two coats on this particularly uh, today. I've got one coat on all the other trim in this room, uh, but I've kind of like, it's been a busy day and uh, just trying to get to everything. Uh, but uh, the rest of my crew didn't show up. We just had to lay in another job. Uh, that is not your problem, but it is affecting my day, and uh, I just need to <laughs> kind of get a coat on this pretty quick so it can set up and I can get one more coat before I leave. I also need to do quite a bit of cleanup, and I'd even like to get another coat on the rest of the trim in here, because uh, the goal is to finish this kitchen on Monday, and you'll probably be seeing some other footage from uh, this job and a few of the other videos that I'm working on. Um, anywho, 
The pattern I'm going to go in for this bench top is very similar to how I cut in walls, which is we're going to go around the outside of the parts that are actually hitting the wall. Um, do all of those. I'm going to do underneath uh, this, this edge here that goes right up against the cabinets. So I'm going to do that first and kind of do an outline and then I'll do my long runs uh, with the grain, with the brush. I am going to be hand brushing this whole thing. Uh, some people might want to uh, roll it. I don't like rolling things like this. I think it looks better being hand brushed if you do it correctly. And uh, the big trick, which I'll kind of talk about and you'll see in the GoPro footage of when I lay down the paint, you want to lay it down pretty thick because uh, the urethane is going to, it has a decent amount of flow to it and a decent amount of open time. So it's going to flow together and then level out. Uh, so if you can put it on decently thick, uh, you'll mitigate some of the brush strokes, but I think that's the, that's the look I would want to go for in this particular application, and it should look pretty snazzy when we're all done. First things first, we're going to cut in all of our edges and then start ripping on the main coat here. All right, so we're doing the outside edges that are right against the wall. And then on Monday, I'm going to tape into the bench and when we do the walls. So this just will need to be nice and dry before I, I tape into it. All right, so right now you can see that I've got this outside edge done and the sides. And then what I want to do is lay down uh, overlapping, uh, I guess like overlapping stripes this way with the grain of the wood and you want to do it fairly thick. Um, most of the time I'm using a little bit thicker brush uh, or uh, a little bit wider brush. This is a two inch brush. Most of the time I'm using a two and a half. Um, but for, I had some tighter trim work in the rest of the kitchen. So this is what I'm using. It just doesn't hold as much paint as I am, uh, I'm used to. So you just need to make sure you're putting on enough. One of the mistakes I see in certain applications, particularly like this, is that people overwork the paint, even professional painters. I see it all the time, uh, where they go back and forth way too much and they're overworking the product. You don't need to do that particularly in a situation like this, where I really just want to float a nice thick coat and keep the wet edges going. So I'm actually putting on reasonably thick. I don't want any runs or anything. We want a nice even coating, but we want all of this, this paint to kind of marry together and give us a nice, a nice even uniform finish, as I said, like a million times during this video. But that is the goal. All right, so that's that's coat number one, looking super snazzy. Time has passed, and the first coat of trim paint on the bench is dry. So now I'm going to do coat number two. And one of the other things I would say is the reason that I cut around the outside um, and do like the edges first, and then do my kind of big strokes with the brush, like covering the main surface of the bench, is that I really want everything, particularly the main surface of the bench, to be wet at the same time. Uh, this is true of most things, but like uh, with painting anyway, is that whatever surface you're painting, it's a really good idea to have everything kind of wet and then subsequently curing at the same time. Uh, that's what gives you a really nice finish at the end because uh, you want all that sheen to marry up and dry at the same time, particularly with higher gloss uh, paints, which we're using a semi-gloss, so uh, that is um, kind of more important in this application than painting walls or ceilings with flat paint, things like that. Uh, the other thing too is if you kind of butch up the first coat and you mess something up, uh, one of the things that people get into trouble with is they try and go back as the paint is already drying and they try and rework it uh, with the brush and then you run into all kinds of other problems. It's a better idea to just let it dry and then address it on coat number two uh, or even do like a third coat if you mess something up on your second coat. Uh, you can sand little things out or whatever. I just took a look at this and I'm pretty happy with uh, how it looks. So I'm gonna do the same exact process again uh, for coat number two. Uh, but just keep in mind, once you cut in those edges, you wanna move pretty quick on these sills and uh, the quicker you can lay it down and then not mess with the paint, the better the finish quality is gonna be. Uh, so it's a little bit of a feel thing, but also just kind of uh, going in the patterns that I'm showing uh, will kind of set you guys up for success. So coat numero dos commences right now.
Alrighty, so we are all done with our bench and uh, actually we're done in this entire kitchen. Looking pretty snazzy in here. Our uh, uh, tape pulled pretty well and had a few little touch-ups, but uh, we'll kind of splice in some after shots of this bench area uh, right now once that dries. The match to the cabinets turned out really nice. Uh, all the trim in here looks great uh, next to the cabinetry, so I'm super happy with that. But uh, if you are dealing with a raw wood sill, that is the process uh, that I would recommend going through. Uh, priming with your wood primer and then running your top coats and uh, all the other stuff that I said in the video. If you found this video useful, you might also like to watch my review of Sherwin-Williams Premium Wall and Wood Primer. That's the primer we used uh, in this video. It's also one of my favorites of all time. I will link to that at the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Please. Most of the time with, excuse me. Alrighty. Amazing.